Professor Sita, the head of the Manimil School here, and uh, my young friends. Some of you may have read about Swami Vivekananda, but let's see what this great man has to say. Let's start with a salutation. Namashri Yate Rajaya Vivekananda Sureya Satchit Sukha Swarupaya Swamine Tapaharini Salutation to that king of renounces and controller of passions, the sage Vivekananda, who is Satchit Ananda, existence, knowledge and bless absolute itself, the spiritual perceptor, the removal of justice. Swami Vivekananda lived all over India, all over Bengal, in the USA, in Europe, more than 100 years ago. He was a great patriot. He inspired a number of Indians to fight for our country's freedom. He was a prolific writer. The complete works covers nine volumes, each one of 500 pages or so a prolific and a wonderful orator and a messenger of Indian religion and culture. He lived not too many years. He lived for only 39 years. In 39 years, he has written, he has talked to, he has traversed all over the world, which we, we do not expect to do in a whole lifetime. In so many years, he travels from south to north, from Colombo and Sri Lanka to Almora, from Gujarat to Assam. He twice visited Europe and America, established Vedanta centers at London, New York, Boston, Chicago, and San Francisco. And he had many Western disciples, the notable among them being Sister Nivedita whose maiden name was Margaret Noble. Swamiji is undoubtedly the tallest figure in India's evolving into freedom and a world economic power now. I have read his complete works completely, slowly, three, four pages every day. Hence, I think I have some credibility to speak to you about Swami Vivekananda and what lessons we can all learn from him. Okay, now Vivekananda, as told by Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore, Nobel Prize winner for literature, Vivekananda said that there was the power of God in every man. Vivekananda's gospel marked the awakening of man in his fullness. If you want to know India, study Vivekananda. In him, everything is positive and nothing negative. You go to the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. He said, I have gone through Swami Vivekananda's works very thoroughly. And after having gone through them, the love I had for my country became a thousandfold. Okay, what I did was try to pull out some lessons we can, we can learn from his teachings. His cardinal teaching and the main teaching was that you are the creator of your own destiny. You are potentially divine. He called all people Amrit, Amritasya Putraha. That means you are not a body, mind, a mechanism consisting of a body and a mind, but something else. We all know that something else is there. Some call it God, some call it soul, some call it spirit, some call it center, some call it consciousness. Whatever name you call it, there is something else that is other than the body and mind. Otherwise, if you were a dead man and were a live man before the death, probably the weights are same. 
that means the matter remains the same. Something is gone, the spirit is gone, we say. So therefore, he says, you are not a body-mind. You are therefore a part of the divine. This is fundamentally difficult to un for us to understand that we are divine. But let's see what, what the three schools. I am not teaching any religion. Swamiji said, you follow any religion. If you are a Muslim, be a better Muslim. Be a Christian, better be a Christian. Be a Hindu, better Hindu. Whatever you are, you be a better person. So therefore, there is not religion, but just to... Because Swamiji spoke extensively about Karma Yoga, Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. So he, Vedanta, so obviously he drew from... Normally, we talk about Dvaita, that is two. Dvaita means two. I and God are separate. God is in a temple, God is in an idol, I am there. So if I want something, I go to the God and say, God, you make me pass in the exam, I will give you 100 rupees, whatever. So therefore, I and God are separate. For most people, this is the right thing to do because it's very difficult for people to, in the village to think of you know, anything beyond that. So therefore, I and God are separate. In the, the Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa, the, the master of Swami Vivekananda said, it doesn't matter. For most people, this is the right path and the path of bhakti, that is the path of thinking that God is supreme is ideal. Then we have the Vishishta, Vishishta Advaita, that is Ramanujya Acharya, who said that I am a part of God. I am not God, but I am a part of God. So therefore, if God is a full circle, I am a part of the God. So therefore, that also people said, yeah, this is, I can understand that I am a part of God. God is big, God is omnipotent, God is omniscient, God is everywhere, but I am limited. I am there in a few places. I am confined to the body and mind that I have, but I can believe that I am also a part of God. Then we have the Advaita of Shankaracharya. The supreme thing which Vivekananda talks about is God and I are one. Now it's difficult to, uh, for all of us to think that uh, uh, God, and God is the same as me. Because I always think of God as something big, something unusual, something that can do anything. And I, am, I can do only a few things. But God and I are one is the Advaita philosophy of Shankaracharya, which Swami Vivekananda said, after some time of practice, of truthful speaking, you will find that you are part of God. You are God himself. So therefore, if this one particular thing can go into the head, and we all believe that we are not ordinary, simple, body, mind, mechanisms, mortals, but something more, and if you can really believe that you are God himself, then, then you will do wonderful things. Enormous amount of confidence will go into you. Some people say that I, am, I don't believe in God. I am not religious. No problem. Swami Vivekananda says if you don't believe in God is wonderful. The, the highest form of religion is Advaita, that is non-dual, it is one, I and God are one. So he is an atheist who does not believe in himself. So he gave a definition that if you say I am an atheist, then you don't believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself and you think that you can do anything and everything and you are the personific personification of God, you are wonderful. That's what he wants. That's the ultimate teaching. So therefore, many of you believe, 
I did God and all and I don't care. I, I care about myself. But if you believe in yourself, if you are strong in yourself, wonderful. Nothing wrong with that. Swamiji said, my ideal indeed can be put in a few words and that is to preach unto mankind their divinity and how to make it manifest in every moment of their life. This is the fundamental cardinal teaching of Swami Vivekananda. That you are not a body-mind mechanism, you are something else, you are a part of God. You may be God himself. God in so many forms is walking around. So therefore, I think it's good to understand that and mull over it. And it says, stand up, be bold, be strong. Take the whole responsibility on your own shoulders and know that you are the creator of your own destiny. All that strength and succor you want is within yourself. So therefore, don't blame anybody. Don't blame anybody for what you are, why you are, who you are, how you are. You are here today because you are decided to be here today. Nobody else decided on your behalf. You are studying here because you decided. Tomorrow you want to be something else, you want to. You want to be the best manager, the best engineer, please feel free. Please do it. That requires certain effort, you do it. But don't blame anybody for anything. Don't blame your father, so no, it's a father did not make me a doctor, otherwise I would not be a doctor. But doesn't matter. So therefore, what Swamiji says in the first lesson is, you must have self-respect. You must respect yourself. That's number one. You must have self-confidence and that will both give you a lot of spiritual strength. So therefore, second lesson is respect all people. Now, a country like ours, we respect ourselves, but we don't respect others. But Swami Vivekananda says, the soul, the God, Atman is same in all. And there is only a difference in manifestation in different individuals. Therefore, you must believe that like God is inside you and you are a part of God, and so everybody else, my colleague Sunil is also a part of God. So therefore, the respect that you give to yourself, you should also respect others who are around you. Okay, let's look at uh, what uh, Lord Krishna says to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Rudeshi Arjuna Tishtati Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rudha Nimaya. Krishna tells Arjuna, I am the power, the source, the energy in all living beings. So he says all living beings are operating because I operate. It's difficult for me to believe that Lord Krishna is driving me. I would like to believe that I am driving myself. Now, see, Ramakrishna Paramsa, the uh, the master of Swami Vivekananda said, celebrated statement, yathomat tatopat. What it meant was, oh, as you think, so is your path. So it doesn't matter what path you follow. He is the first person in recorded history to have practiced many religions and found them all to be true. All religions are so many different paths to God. Suppose God is in the center and you are a human being at the circumference. And to reach the center, you can follow infinite paths, many of your engineers. There are many radial paths taking us from the circumference to the center. And therefore, if you are a Sikh, you follow the Guru Nanak path, if a Muslim, Muhammad path, Christian, Jesus path and Hindu, it could be uh, Goddess Kali or Rama or Krishna. So therefore, there is no reason to, 
to deride or to talk badly about somebody who follows a different path. You are following one radial path, there are infinite radial paths that take, take you to God. So therefore, Swami Vivekananda says, don't change your religion. If you are a Muslim, be a better Muslim. If you are a Christian, be a better Christian. If you are a Hindu, be a better Hindu. If you are a Sikh, be a better Sikh. And if you are, don't believe any God, you believe in yourself, be a better person. Therefore, if we believe that and accept that, then learn to respect every other human being and treat them with respect, irrespective of their caste, creed, community and social and financial position. Try to see unity and not division all around you. Because we have double standards. In my office, I am a chairman. Somebody comes to me and said, a sweeper wants to meet you, he has a problem. I said, I am a chairman of the company and a sweeper wants to meet me. No, 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 I cannot meet. So I didn't meet him. I went home and there was some, something wrong uh, lying on the floor and uh, my wife took a broom and cleaned up. And similarly, a cook wants to meet me, I will refuse. But when I go home hungry, my wife cooks and she's a wonderful person, she's a devta, she's the one who is removing my hunger. So therefore, person who does the same job in home, hung, cooking, sweeping, cleaning, is a wonderful thing. But when it comes to outside, we don't think so. And a sweeper is so important. If this place was not swept, and all garbage were lying all over, we could not uh, conduct this meeting. Therefore, the dignity of labor, respective every person, whatever job he does, koi kaam bada aur chota nahi hota hai. Sab, sab kaam karna chahiye. That's why the Prime Minister said, Swachita Abhiyan. Why was a need to do that? Because as Indians, we are used to keeping our house clean. But when it comes to outside, we don't keep it clean. We, we have no hesitation in throwing garbage on the road or in front of the neighbor's house. But we have to change all this. We, we can make it clean and neat. And that's, that's the dream that the Prime Minister has said. Now, okay, after two things, one of the most important things is to dream. Many Indians don't dream because we think it, dreaming is a bad thing and uh, night dreaming is bad enough, uh, but uh, day dreaming is terrible. But dreams are everything. Dreams are the starting point of all ambition, all growth, all development. So dream to achieve something big. Actually you have to dare to dream. So dream something, if you would want to dream to be, become a Nobel Prize winner, dream to become a, get a gold medal, requires tremendous amount of energy. Why we don't have so many gold Nobel Prize winners in this country because not many Indians are dreaming of becoming Nobel Prize winners. If I ask all these people here, how many of you are thinking of getting a Nobel Prize? No hand goes up. That means nobody is thinking of getting a Nobel Prize. If I ask how many of you are thinking of getting a gold medal in one of these games, Probably no. Okay, this is not our field, you know. Okay, I ask further, how many of you are going, thinking of excelling, being the best in your field? You are a manager, you are a scientist. Then some people should be thinking of that. The whole idea is to think in the best that you can do, better than anybody else. 
that's how you dream freedom fighter poet nightingale of india saroni naidu she said hold fast to your dreams for if dreams die a life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly so therefore it is absolutely essential that you dream and dream big and then only you will achieve something if you don't dream you don't think you don't plan you don't do that's all you live a mediocre life and that's why we say that indians we are full of mediocre persons where are the specialists where are the nobel prize winners but slowly things are changing there are nobel prize winners this year peace prize was obtained by somebody and there are people who are getting the, to be the best in the world because those people have broken the boundaries and said i will be the best in the world eminent philosopher and writer bertrand russell said you see things that are there and ask why i see things that are not there and ask why not so therefore the whole attitude of questioning question everything question what you see question what you do not see also then only you will be able to achieve something and get something new no new comes without any asking any questions in fact all good ideas in management or elsewhere depends on ask questions peter rucker the management guru said it is not so important to find the solutions to the problems you must ask the right questions so develop the art of asking the right question now let's take one example of sachin tendulkar who has done wonderful things who has got a bharat ratna jewel of india at the age of 17 he was like us yes, enjoy your game and chase your dreams because dreams do come true this is sachin tendulkar he dreamt he dreamt that he'll be best man in a school he dreamt that he'll be best man in maharashtra he dreamt that he'll be best man in india in playing cricket and he dreamt that he'll be the best human being ever played cricket and he achieved that objective by scoring the maximum possible runs let's see what all he did first batsman to score double hundred in one day cricket first ban- batsman in the world to score hundred international centuries highest run getter in all forms of cricket bharat ratna jo is jewel of india he has become so therefore he has done something wonderful something that we can all emulate and see if sachin tendulkar can can do it we can do it too why not he has done it in cricket let's do it in management let's do it in science let's do it in some other field whatever cho- our chosen field is let's look at this guy he uh, is called obama barack obama us president he was standing for president and a person who was like me who has studied in america how can this guy become president first of all he is not white caucasian so he is colored number 2 he has got a name uh, he is a single mother his father has uh, gone away in kenya and number 3 and his name sounds very similar to the man who is most hated in america osama bin laden so osama obama so i thought that he will just not get i don't know how many of you have read uh, oba barack obama's books one of the books is audacity of hope an enormous confidence he had he said i will become president of india everything starts with the mind everything starts with your determination to become something in your own mind nobody else this guy decided that he will become president of india and he became so therefore a lot of positive thinking and lot of 
Dreams are important. If you don't dream, you are a very poor man. You are not a poor man if you don't have money. You are a poor person if you don't dream. Dream of something big, dream of achieving something, dream of doing something. Otherwise you will live and die, you know, without achieving anything. Okay. Lesson number four, lesson number three was dreaming. Lesson number four was develop positive thinking. Anybody who has achieved anything in this world has done, has result of positive thinking. Anybody who thinks negative, talks negative, this is not good, that's not good, cannot achieve anything. That's why Swami Vivekananda says, cherish positive thoughts. It is a tremendous error to feel helpless. Stand up, be bold, be strong and take the responsibility on your own shoulders. The remedy for weakness is not brooding over it, but thinking of strength. Teaching men of the strength is already within them. Therefore, whether children are there, Many times we, we talk of things that are weaknesses. Oh, you go and do this, don't do this, don't do this. I said, don't do that. There are a number of things that he's good at. Talk of the good things. The management guru, Peter Drucker said, build on the strengths, make weaknesses irrelevant. Because you concentrate on weaknesses, you will get nowhere. At best, weaknesses will go away and you will reach zero. You won't reach hundred, thousand, million up in the skies. Only your strength can get you, not your weakness. Therefore, it's absolutely essential that you have positive thinking. Swami Vivekananda said in Upanishads, in the large text of matter that is written as Upanishads. In Upanishads he has to select one word. He said that will be Abhi. You know Abhai. Abhi is fearlessness. He says all Indians are afraid. Many Indians are afraid of something or the other. Why? Why are you afraid? People who do wonderful things are not afraid. Today morning, some of you must have keen, um, seen in Discovery Channel, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, Nick Wallende, you heard of it. He was a, a tightrope walker and uh, he was walking across two 50-story buildings in Chicago, downtown Chicago, on a wire. First, he walked with eyes open. Second, he walked with eyes blindfolded and uh, enormous confidence, enormous concentration, enormous training. He, he succeeded in both and he got the Guinness Book of Records for both these events. Be not afraid of anything. You will do marvelous work. The moment you fear, you are nobody. This is not my words, this is all Swamiji's words. It is fear that is the great cause of misery in the world. It is fear that is the cause of all our woes and it is fearlessness that brings heaven even in a moment. So therefore you should not be afraid of anything. Circumstances, life, comes, you know, many things, good things, bad things, difficult things, doesn't matter. But be brave. Be fearless and you can circumvent anything. Let's take the example of Yora Singh. Another Indian example of a person who did what nobody did in cricket. Six balls, he sent them over the fence for sixes. And one day he went to the dressing room and found that he spit blood. And then uh, he didn't know what it was, a throat problem or whatever. 
it was finally diagnosed as cancer. So many, many of us, if you have cancer, we are so worried and we don't, won't do anything at all. But not this guy. He came back and played test cricket and uh, one day cricket and he's uh, all raving to go again as the... If you read his book, basically perseverance, not giving up, fearlessness says, how does it matter? If there is a cancer, there is a disease, I'll defeat cancer. And in a way, he defeated. Let's look at another, uh, I don't know if you have heard of him, Eric Wein Weihenmeyer. How many of you have heard of Eric Weihenmeyer? Nobody. Okay. Eric Weihenmeyer was uh, climbed mountains and he climbed all the seven peaks in the world and he's a very unusual example of excellence. What happened was he used to go to mountaineering with his father when he was a kid and suddenly he, he could not see the board. So he came back and told his mom that, Mom, I'm not able to see the board. Something is it's all blurry. Then the mom said, oh, there must be some problem, went to the doctor. Then they referred to a specialist. And finally, it was diagnosed as a rare form of eye disease. And the doctor said, your child is going to go blind before he is going to go 10 years of age. And the mother cried, didn't know what to do. The boy didn't know, he went to sleep. But then he didn't give up. He said, I am blind, so what? So like Helen Keller, you have, many of you have read, wonderful things can be done by blind people also. Things that all of us with eyes open cannot do. So he said, I'll do everything that my father wanted me to do. So therefore, he climbed, what did he do? He climbed all the world's seven summits, blind, including Mount Everest. He was stood on top of Mount Everest. The first picture was that. He has run marathons, wrestled, skydived and skied. But Eric has never actually seen the mountains. He climbed, the opponents he wrestled, the airplanes he jumped off, or the students he taught. He was blind. So a movie has been made and he has written an interesting book also. He's also an inspirational speaker. You can go to the Google and read it. But let's see. Mount Everest, the tallest point on Earth, 29,035 feet. For a sighted person, climbing Mount Everest is one of the greatest physical challenges on the face of the Earth. Consistent snow, straight downhill. step is or he has to feel every step. It's just we have to be his eyes. He has no eyes. I just don't want to fall. Yeah, you're good, man. Yeah, I feel it. Like that. Sometimes people assume that if you can't see how far you have to fall, you're not afraid. But I sometimes think that falling into the unknown is scarier than falling into something you can see. Biggie, 
stop right there, there's a uh, one foot crevasse behind you. Rock! Oh, oh. There's some guy, he came in today. He didn't know I was in the tent. He didn't know I was sitting right here. And he goes, well, you guys are gonna have a hell of a time getting that blind guy up there. You guys have your work cut out for you. That's an inspiration for all of us. The blind man climbed all the seven mountains, went where we don't even dream to go. Small hillock, small things, you know, no, don't climb it, you'll get blood pressure and all that. So therefore, as a, as a race, we are, I don't know to use a strong word, but somebody has called us a nation of cowards. Are we? I think we have to move towards bravery, move towards doing outer things, move towards thinking out of the box, do something unusual, do something. It's happening because all the young people who don't believe in all these old stories and they are doing a lot of new things, wonderful things. Okay, now the lesson number five. There are only six lessons and then we'll talk about something else. Follow the right path. The path to success can be anything. It can be right path, it can be wrong path. Success should be achieved following the path that is right and good. Our national emblem is Satyami, Satyam Eva Jayati. Truth alone is victorious. But one time, uh, a wise man give, was giving a talk and said, looks like we have made it asatyam eva jayate. I think slowly moving, moving away to the path of satyam. He said, if India wants, you want India to be great, you want your country to be a wonderful country in the world, just move away from asatyam to satyam, from untruth to truth. So that's what we have to do and that's what you all have to do because you are all young. Gandhi said, please remember in your life that you cannot achieve success by following the wrong path or doing the wrong things. This ends and means. You want to achieve a particular end, what means shall I follow? Right means or wrong means? Good means or bad means. One of the greatest lessons I have learned in my life is to pay as much attention to the means of the work as at end. So the ends do not justify the means. So therefore, you must be very careful what means you are adopting to achieve the end. Suppose you want to get very good marks in exam, you can cheat. But someday you may get caught and you will be, you will be nowhere, you will be absolutely thrown out. So therefore, that's not a desirable way. The only desirable way is to work hard to get to the easy results. But speaking the truth is so difficult. Because every day in life you have truth, untruth, dharma, adharma, right, wrong. It's conflict, you know, in our own minds, we think what to do, what not to do. Some wise man has said, Sach bolkar is jaha me ji nahi sakta. Sach bolkar is jaha me ji nahi sakta. I cannot live in this world by speaking the truth. But jhoot bolkar he rama tere paas a nahi sakta. By speaking a lie, I cannot come to you, O Rama. So therefore you have to choose. 
you have to tell a lie and be out, be an outcast or speak the truth and get to anywhere. Swami Vivekananda said, if for 12 years, 12 long years you can speak the truth and only truth and nothing but the truth, you can achieve anything in this world. But it's so difficult. Guru Charandas, former chairman of Procter & Gamble India, wrote a good book, A Difficulty of Being Good. I don't know if you have read. It's a, it's a lot of research and Mahabharata. In his book, one of, the, one of the anecdotes is, when Draupadi was brought into the Kaurava court for insulting her, but disrobing her, whatever. And everybody is watching and a ghastly thing is happening in front of their own eyes. The wise minister of the Rashtra, Vidura, he quotes the sage Kashyapa about the immorality of remaining silent when there is evil around. Many of us see a lot of wrong things happening around us and we keep quiet. According to this, if you keep quiet, you are also in the wrong. By keeping quiet, when wrong things are going around you, you are not doing the right thing, you are also participating in the wrong. Vidho dharmohi adharmena sabam yatra upapadyate When honest persons fail in their duty to speak, speak up, the wound dharma and commit adharma. When you keep silent, you are committing adharma. The, the leader of the conspiracy, Duryodhana, who asked, who ordered, earns half the penalty. The immediate culprit, Dushasana, a quarter, and the witnesses, Bhishma, Drona, Karna, all of us, who do not speak up, are also guilty by a quarter. So this is uh, said by Sage Kashyapa, that if you keep silent, when things are going wrong around you, you are also committing a dharma, and you are also a part of that wrong action. So, think about it. Okay, we go to the next, how do you achieve all this? You, you have good uh, philosophy, good dreams. I think, I can only suggest one thing, working hard. There is no other way to achieve success in life other than working hard. Success is all about perseverance. Practice, perseverance, hard work in your chosen field, whatever you want to be. A Nobel Prize winner gets a Nobel Prize after tens of years of hard work. Being in the lab for years together. Sania Mirza became the number one in the women's badminton after hours of practice. Hours of practice. Sani and Nihwal, okay. So, so thing with uh, uh, Sani and Mitzah also. So therefore, a number of things where you want to achieve success, achieve wonderful things, you have to work hard, very hard. That's why Swamiji talks about two words, Shraddha and Sadhana. Shraddha is dedication and Sadhana is a lot of hard work. You do Sadhana. What you want is this Shraddha. What makes the difference between man and man is the difference in this Shraddha and nothing else. What makes one man great and another weak is this Shraddha. The Shraddha must enter into you. So a lot of dedication is required and a lot of hard work is required. Then only you will be able to achieve anything. The struggle is a great lesson. Mind you, the great benefit of this life is struggle. It is that we pass. If there is only any road to heaven, it is through hell. To succeed, you must have tremendous perseverance, tremendous spell. Have that sort of energy and that sort of will, work hard and you will reach this goal. 
my wish and blessing is that you be pros everybody has to work hard we have the story of the lion and the deer the lion is the king of the forest the lion says i am hungry but doesn't want to go and go after the deer he stays under the tree i am the king of the forest but the the sanskrit shloka says udyame nai siddhanti karyani na mano na manoratahi nai suptasya singhasya pravishanti mriga the deer is not going to oblige the lion by entering his mouth so the lion is hungry he has to go after the deer and run like hell if the deer wants to escape it has to run like hell to prevent the lion from catching him that's why the swami ji gave his famous quotation utishtata jagrata prapya varan nibodata arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached so therefore we have covered about six lessons we can we can learn you are the creator of your own destiny don't blame anybody you are the creator if you want to change your station in life you do it respect others dream of big things have a positive attitude follow the right path and work hard we talk about demographic dividend of india which prime minister everybody is talking 50% of india is less than 25 years another 15% is between 25 and 35 and 35% of india's population is about 30 years 35 years we are an old country with mohenjo-daro harappa and you know various things but we are inhabited by lot of young people so what are we are we an old country or a young country a country is determined by the people who live in that country if the lot of people who live in this country are very young then india is a youthful nation india is a young nation so therefore you have tremendous opportunity of providing young skilled and intelligent workforce and managers for the whole world and this very important because we can go all over the world i am not one of those people who say don't cross the boundaries we go today a lot of iit people have any engineers all have gone to america and made a name for themselves the chairman of microsoft satya nadella is from hyderabad so a number of business schools the chairman are indians so therefore the image of india has changed changed tremendously india is no longer a land of snakes and elephants and all that india is a land of lot of intelligent people india is a land of lot of people who think who can create solutions who can give solutions for the whole world and it also india is also an economic power now a, a, a report by city bank and also by goldman sachs they have ranked different countries on a purchasing power parity basis this is not the same as uh, absolute dollar rating it is based on what a dollar can purchase and what a rupee can purchase relatively suppose we have 100 dollars i can buy certain things in america multiply by 60 6000 rupees i have i can buy double the amount in india suppose so therefore on on ranking of this basis usa is number 1 china is number 2 japan is number 3 india is number 4 and i am told that we have crossed japan and become number 3 in the world and we let us do fast forward to 2020 india will be the number 3rd economic power in the world number 1 will be china number 2 will be us 
Number three will be India. And let's do further fast forward to 2050 when many of you people will be around. India will be a number one economic power in the world. This is a forecast by Citibank and Goldman Sachs also. India with an PPB 85 trillion GDP and China with 80 trillion and USA with 40 trillion. Difficulty for me to believe because I've always thought that America was a great, wonderful country and India was uh, nowhere to catch up. But looks like one of these days we are going to cross America because already happening. Europe is not growing, Japan is not growing, America is growing at a couple of percentage because of a lot of young people, especially from various countries of the world. But uh, when it comes to India, we have a lot of young people. If you, go to Latin, uh, if you go to Scandinavian countries like Norway, Sweden, Finland, you find that a uh, lot of old people are there. And people don't die nowadays, you know. People go beyond 80, 90 easily, even in India. Even in India, we, 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 it's very easy to cross 80. In those countries in 90, in Japan is 100. So therefore you have a lot of old people. Old people, lot of means unproductive people. People assuming that beyond 70, 75 years is unproductive. You have a lot of produ unproductive people who are in the population, who are not generating wealth. So therefore the other people have to generate wealth. So therefore all these countries are short of teachers, short of nurses, short of doctors. So this is a tremendous opportunity for, for India to ban all this. Let us apply the nurses of the world, the doctors of the world, the teachers of the world. So instead of thinking of a problem, it's an opportunity. It's a tremendous opportunity to spread all over the world. And don't think of India as, as your operation base. Think of world as an operation base. And Swamiji said, Vasudaiva Kutamakam. We are one human family, one world family. So therefore you should move in that direction. And uh, so India is an emerging economic power, will be in the top two countries. Young people will make India great. So if you want to be economic power, we cannot also be the number of place for corruption. We can't have malnutrition, we, have, we can't have antiquated laws. So we have to set all these right. So the number of challenges for all of young people, you have to do this. You are the future of this country, you are the future of India. People like us can talk, but we are in the evening of our life. You are the ones who are going to build, do wonders. And therefore, better quality of education, skilled people, experienced managers, higher standards of governance, better legal system, transparency in government and management and practices. So basically, we have to in globalize in practice. So we have to all over the world. Our young people have to go all over the world to man the schools and colleges, our teachers and professors, serve in the hospitals and nurses and doctors, various organizations, engineers, financial analysts and managers. And China is going to be number one. And uh, even now, surpassing America, China is the largest trading partner for India. And if I might, I might ask, how many of you are learning Chinese? Can you lift your hand? Nobody. Therefore, there's something disconnect. You are having China as your largest trading partner. Madam Sita has gone to China and come back. <laughs> so, so therefore, if China is going to be a largest trading partner and China is going to be a large economic power in the world, what are you doing not learning Chinese? When I go to Chicago, my grandson is learning Chinese. I said, why are you learning Chinese? 
He says, Tata, you don't know. China is going to become a world power. So a lot of Americans are learning Chinese. So therefore, there are a lot of food for thought, a lot of things that we have to do. Okay, we come to this sort of end. We will take questions. Swamiji said, I want each one of my children, all of your children, to be hundred times greater than I, I ever could be. Every, every one of you must be a giant, must, that's my word. Obedience, readiness and love for the cause. You have three there, nothing can hold you back. So therefore, you can do wonders and you should do wonders. The one thing is, we should not worry, I'm small, small, I can do small things, I can do some things in my sphere of influence. There's a proverb that says, it is better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. So don't, don't waste your time cursing the darkness, this is wrong, that is wrong, forget it. What can you do? What contribution can you make in your life? If Indi every Indian becomes great, India will become great. If every Indian and the surroundings become clean, India will become clean. So therefore, India is nothing but one billion Indians. So if every Indian decides, all of you decide, first of all, to do something unusual, something special, something different, something good, and wonders will happen. In the same way of lighting a lamp, our Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore said in Bengali, in his epic Kanika, Ke loibo mar karjo kehe shundharabi, who will take up my task? Ask the setting sun. The sun is setting. It asks, who will take up my task? Mater Pradeep Chalo, a small earthen where lamp was there. She Kahilo, it said, Shwami, Amar Jistuko Shodho, Kori Bodami. Whatever is possible by me, I will do. So therefore, all of us have to learn a lesson from this and, and do little bit. In our own area, do the best you can, do the most wonderful thing you can, that's enough. That will do wonders and our country will become the greatest country and your own life will become very happy and wonderful. So we have time for five, ten minutes of some questions and answers maybe, if you have. Okay, that's, that's the end of the session.